I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you've got a rapid fire module or any of the other high powered FPV modules like TrueDX, Clearview module, or maybe more to come, if you've got any of these modules and they're going into low power mode, you need to watch today's video. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Here's the reason this video is necessary. Early Fat Shark goggles had a design flaw. It wasn't a flaw at the time that they came out because early Fat Shark receiver modules didn't draw very much power. When high powered receiver modules started coming out, the Clearview module, the Rapid Fire, and now the True DX, the design flaw in the goggles was revealed. And that is that there is an inductor, actually two inductors on the circuit boards in these goggles that have way too low a current rating. And these inductors heat up and cause voltage drop. And then the module goes into low power mode and won't work right. You know the module has gone into low power mode. Well, I can tell you about the rapid fire personally. It'll say low power, yes, on the screen. And in the OSD, if you've got the RSSI bars up, instead of two RSSI bars, bloop, it'll go to one RSSI bar. What the rapid fire does when it goes into low power mode is it actually shuts down one of its two diversity receivers and it draws less power and it can keep operating, but that's not what you want. That's not why you bought it. The Clearview and the True DX also draw enough power to suffer from the same thing, although I don't remember off the top of my head exactly what they'll do when they go into low power mode. It turns out that there is a relatively easy mod you can do to the goggles to fix this problem. I say relatively easy. You have to be a little bit handy with a soldering iron in order to do the mod. And I'm going to show you how to do the mod. And if you've already done the L1 inductor mod on your goggles, it may not be enough. You may still get low power mode. So even if you saw my earlier video about the L1 inductor mod, keep watching. There's another inductor that you may need to fix. And I got to apologize. When I made the earlier video about the L1 inductor mod, at that time, no one, not even Immersion RC, knew that the L10 inductor could also be a problem. We all thought that the L1 inductor was enough. And it's only after people started doing the mod and then going, ah, I did the mod and it's still not fixing the problem, that we tracked down the L10. And that's why I'm making this updated video to show you both of the inductors you need to mod to really completely fix the goggles. Now, if you're not interested in pulling out a soldering iron and hacking up your goggles, modules like the True DX come with this little ribbon cable. And what this is going to do is it is going to plug in over here to the head tracker bay where there is an alternate source of 5 volt output. And that will let that you just run the little ribbon cable through the goggles and plug it into the module, this, this module, plug it into the module, and then it gets power and it's good to go. And this, this is really easy to do. I mean, you can tape it to the front of the module and it's very unobtrusive. Or if you feel a little braver, you run it through the inside and you don't even see it at all. So why not just do this? Why take a soldering iron to our expensive goggles? There's two good reasons. Number one, if you use the ribbon cable, then when you take the module out of the goggles for any reason, it's going to pull on the ribbon cable and it'll be a pain in the butt to disconnect. These ribbon cables aren't made to be reconnected and disconnected an infinite number of times. The other reason the mod is better is, as you may know, the goggles have a button on the underside to turn the module on and off. And this is useful if you're using an external AV input from a ground station or if you're looking at the DVR in the goggles. If you use the ribbon cable over to the head tracker bay, this switch doesn't work anymore because the module has an alternate source of power, right? So and it's kind of annoying to not be able to use your DVR. So I recommend if you feel like you're up to it, that you do the mod. Before we do this mod, you need to ask yourself, do you actually need to do this mod? On the rapid fire, it'll actually tell you low power mode and warn you that you're in low power mode. And yet then you need to do the mod. But newer goggles like the HDOs, the Attitude V5s and the Attitude V4s, they don't need to do this mod. They should work just fine even without it. It's only the older goggles like HD2, HD3, Dominator V3s. Those are the ones that need to do the mod. The bottom line is if your module is working and not giving you an error message, you may not need to do this and you shouldn't just pull your goggles apart and start soldering on them for no freaking reason. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the module out of the goggles and we're going to take the head tracker, the, this cover off and we're going to take the headband off the goggles. And if you got a uh, SD card in the DVR, 
go ahead and take that out as well. The next thing to do is remove two screws from the underside of the goggles, one and two, but you don't need to remove this one. This one holds the optics module in place. It does not hold the goggles together. And by the way, while I'm doing this, I do need to put a disclaimer on this. If you do this and you damage your goggles, that's on you, not me. And it will not be, if you damage your goggles, that won't be covered under Fat Shark Warranty. If you don't feel comfortable doing this mod, you can just use the ribbon cable. Or if you send the goggles to Fat Shark Service, they can do the mod for you. They might even be nice and do it for free, although I'm not making you any promises. This is easy to do and safe to do, but if you screw it up, don't blame me. That happened on my previous video. Someone get in the comments section and was like, you ruined my goggles, Joshua Bardwell. And I was like, I don't even think I've been to your house, dude. Okay. The next thing we need to do is split the clamshell. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna begin, there's three tabs across the front and one tab on the eyepiece. I'm gonna press in on the bottom of the goggle and separate that half and it's gonna start to come apart. There we go. You can feel it pop. Now, while holding that, what I like to do is then apply a little bit of pressure and pop the nose piece. And now they should easily, without just a little pressure on the underside here and right here, and they should easily come apart. Now, once you've got them separated, don't rip them apart. There's all kinds of cables and stuff on the inside that you can damage, so don't do that. I'm gonna very gently separate them, and you can see the next thing is this cable here is twisted up and stuffed into the, up, the top side. I'm just gonna kinda gently untwist that so it'll have a little more flex. And you're gonna wanna be really careful about this ribbon cable here. Some people t disconnect the ribbon cables. Personally, I find it a real hassle to get them reconnected, so I'm just trying to be careful not to damage them. If you tug on them, you can damage them. The first place we're gonna look is right here on this board. This is the uh, power board and the HDMI board right here. And the inductor we want is labeled L1. Well, I <laughs> I pulled these goggles off my shelf because I wanted to, I was like, oh, these goggles, I haven't done the mod to them, but it turns out that I've already done this mod on these goggles and forgot that I did it. So here is the board, and just for reference, here's the HDMI input, and here's the AV input, and you can see right here, there used to be a little inductor, and I have desoldered the inductor and replaced it with a little piece of wire. What you basically wanna do is just short circuit that so the inductor is not there anymore. You could also do it by soldering a piece of wire on top of the inductor and it'll just short circuit the inductor. But this inductor is so tiny, I found that actually it was easier just to remove the inductor entirely. You can do that. I was gonna demo this for you, I'm sorry. By just taking a, a soldering iron, and this is, you can see the width of my chisel tip here is wide enough that I can just press it up against where the, in, the both sides of the inductor and heat it and the inductor just pops right up. Be really gentle because if you lift one of these pads, you're gonna be in big trouble. Now in some goggles, depending on how old they are, this inductor is not in that exact place and it is elsewhere on the board, but to tell you the truth, I honestly don't remember where it is. So if you look in this exact location and you don't see the L1 inductor, then you have to look somewhere else on this. It's somewhere on this board and it is labeled L1 and you just have to find it. Yeah, do you see? Look really carefully here. You can just barely see it on the camera, but you can see it's labeled L1 here. There's a little lettering right next to it, L1. That's what you're looking for. Well, okay, that's the L1 inductor. To do the L10 inductor, we're gonna need to remove the DVR board. And we're gonna do that by removing these two screws, one and two. Come on out of there, sir. Come on out of there, sir. Thank you, sir. And then the DVR board should lift out. Be real careful of this capacitor here. This here is the capacitor that keeps the board, uh, that lets the DVR save your video after you unplug your battery. And it should just lift out. Let's be really careful. Yeah. There's also a little piece of tape or foam here to keep light from shining in the SD card slot. And it may stick. But we're just very carefully going to lift this out. This right here is the L10 inductor. It's on the top left side of the DVR board. Note where it is relative to this joystick. Here are the channel change buttons and the SD card. And 
this guy is big enough that I don't feel comfortable trying to remove it with a, a soldering iron. I'm worried I would melt one of the pads and not the other and lift the pad. If you have a hot air gun or if you have some of the, some chip quick chip removal stuff, then it might work for you. Personally, I just jumper this one with a wire and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do here. Halfway there. Cause that would suck. Oh, perfect, done. Oh, holy, there we go. So now you can see, we've just got this wire cross and jumper to cross this inductor. And that is the L10 inductor mod. To reassemble the goggles, first the DVR board goes back in the top shell. Again, be really careful of all the uh, ribbon cables, not to tug on them or damage them. There we go. It's gonna fit down in there. Perfect. These two little bitty screws. Then we're gonna put this board back in the left side and it's a really important you see this, there are two slots here, one and two, that it goes in. It's a common mistake that I make when I'm reassembling these to miss one of the slots and have it go in crooked and then the goggle doesn't wanna to go together. And of course it goes in with the HDMI and stuff facing down, obviously. It's gonna slide all the way in there and then the goggles are gonna go back together. And the thing to be careful of here is not to accidentally pinch any of the wires. So just get these out of the way. The biggest risk I think is this left side wire which likes to fold forward and tends to wanna to get clamped in here. So just very carefully begin to put them back together. Feel it all slide into place but don't squeeze it until you're absolutely sure everything is right. Like I've got some resistance on the side and I'm not sure why. Let's just make sure that I've... Oh, see, I did it. <laughs> Even after I said, see my mistake? See, so anytime there's resistance or anything, just be gentle and figure out what's wrong. There we go. Now it goes in easily and now this should easily slide back together. Okay, and no pinched ribbon connector there, no pinches there, and this wire here, we'll clean this up in a second, no pinched wires anywhere else. There is a, um, right here where this comes down, this post here, that can also pinch this black wire, so be careful about that. All right, perfect, and we can just apply some pressure and pop them back together. Okay, then gently just twist this wire and it will tuck up inside here, right up inside to, between that post and the shell. That's where Fat Shark keeps it to keep it out of the way. And I think it's a good idea to just put it right back there. Okay, finally, We'll reinstall these two screws. Joshua from the future here with a little note for you. Uh, it's really easy to not install these screws all the way. There's like, they start to get some resistance early and you think you've got them all the way in, but actually there's like three more turns and then they get a little more resistance and you're like, oh, that's all the way in. So hold the goggle firmly together with your hand while you screw it in and make sure it's 100% of the way in. You, the way to tell is if you can spread the back half of the clamshell, if you can lift and spread it, then the screw is not all the way in. The last test you're gonna wanna do is install a battery. And let's see if the screens turn on. They do, that's a good sign. <laughs> if that didn't happen, we'd be in trouble. And we'll plug in the rapid fire module and it turns on also, we should see that by flipping this switch, it turns off. We're not using the aux power, so that's good. And we will just go into the menu and go to about, and we see power, 5.0 volts, low power, no. That's definitely what we wanna see. Well, all right, that's gonna do it for this video. Now you've done the L1 and the L10 mod. If you did the L1 mod and then it didn't work for you and you had to come back and yank your goggles open again to do the L10 inductor, sorry, 
like literally not even Fat Shark knew the L10 inductor was going to need to be done. So, oops. Um, I hope that this was super helpful to you, and I hope that this saves you a lot of trouble dealing with goggles in the future. It's your rapid fire or whatever module. It's just going to work. If you value that, I'd like to remind you, this is my full-time job. So if you get value from my content, there are a couple ways you can support me. One is by joining my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description. I'd love to have you as a subscriber at $2 a month or more. The other thing you can do is in the bottom of most of my videos are product links. And those product links are affiliate links. When you click them and then you make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, then I get a small commission and it's one of the ways I support myself. It's a small amount, but it does, it adds up uh, and it really matters. So just want to remind you of that. If you enjoyed the content, if you feel like I earned your subscription, your patronage, or using my affiliate links, that sure would mean a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.